see last class i have started hydrodynamic transmission okay so in that uh, unit 2 we will be studying fluid coupling and torque converter what do you mean by fluid coupling and torque converter we have seen in the last class fluid coupling is like a clutch but it will be operated hydro kinetics that is hydro kinetics will be coming into picture that is you will be using hydro kinetic energy you will be getting the energy from fluid okay so we have seen a fluid coupling in the last class and uh, we have to see performance uh, characteristics then we have to discuss torque converter today and we will be uh, finishing this unit uh, by next class okay so unit 2 hydrodynamic transmission you see the word hydrodynamic transmission hydrodynamic means we are going to use the fluid force okay so you can see last class uh, there will be two members driving member and driven member between both will be having fluid the fluid only will be taking the power from driving member and it will be giving to the driven member so that my driven member will be rotating there is no mechanical contact okay so you can see fluid coupling in automatic transmission that is a uh, uh, you may have a fluid coupling if uh, torque multiplication is not there you will be uh, going for a gearbox and if you are using a torque converter it will do the work of gearbox also okay so fluid coupling and uh, torque converter will find application in automatic transmission here you can see fluid coupling is also known as fluid flywheel okay so fluid coupling is also known as fluid flywheel so we have discussed uh, last class so what happens so we will uh, recap what we have seen so you can see uh, uh, in flywheel side, my turbine will be there. It will, will be having a number of uh, blades. We can call it as blades or veins. Okay, so it will be attached to the center, and it will be having an impeller. Impeller means uh, it will be connected to the engine. A impeller will be getting power from flywheel. So impeller can be termed as pump also. Okay, so you can see uh, uh, the arrangement of the impeller. That is, you can see torus guide core. What do you mean by this guide core? No, it will direct the fluid flow. That is, I have to direct the fluid which is going to leave from the impeller so that it will strike the turbine and it will be rotating. I have to direct my fluid so that only I am using what? Torus guide core. Okay. So you can see the fluid particle which will be at the center due to centrifugal force and due to kinetic energy. Why well, you know centrifugal force is due to rotation and it is rotating at a speed okay some motion is there due to the speed so what happen we will be having kinetic energy so due to this two uh, kinetic energy and centrifugal force you can see the fluid particle will be moving towards outside okay that is from small r to capital r okay so r varies from uh, this point to maximum here so what will happen at this point centrifugal force will be maximum so that uh, the fluid will be going and it will be striking the blades of the turbine. So here what will happen? The blades of the impeller will be working on the fluid. Whereas here, fluid will be going and it will be accepting work on the blades of the turbine. So here what will happen? Uh, the centrifugal force will be maximum and it will be moving towards inward and force will be decreasing. Whereas here, it will be starting from inner, centrifugal force will be increasing and it will be reaching maximum at periphery. Okay, let us see. Someone is coming. Eleven sun came. What happened? Uh, fluid will be having a maximum centrifugal force at this point and it will be imparting motion to the blades of the turbine here. And what will happen? The force will be uh, decreasing and uh, the turbine will uh, start rotating. And you have to see the important point in fluid coupling is both turbine and impeller will be rotating in same direction. You can see the impeller will be rotating in this direction. Turbine also will be rotating in uh, anti-clockwise the shown direction is anti-clockwise so you have to remember in fluid coupling both impeller and turbine will be rotating in same direction whereas in torque converter no it will be opposite okay 
so already i told you what happens so centrifugal force and main thing in fluid coupling is it can't multiply the torque it will transmit the torque but it can't multiply the torques okay so remaining things uh, we have seen the same thing only i have explained you so i told you know guide ring it will guide the fluid flow you can draw this uh, sketch you can make it uh, simplified you don't need to draw this uh, bearing simply you show a shaft and this arrangement and all not needed radial pack seal and output flange this and all not needed just to draw a shaft and so the you need that turbine turbine should be connected to transmission shaft so here you can see you will be having a crank shaft here uh, you can uh, see you will be having a crank shaft at the end of the crank shaft you will be having flywheel okay so at the end of the crank shaft you will be having a flywheel and the flywheel will be connected to the impeller you have to understand turbine is nearer to flywheel but it is not connected to the flywheel actually my pump is like a engine my pump is my impeller so my source of power from engine it is given to impeller so you can see i can use the word impeller or pump it is connected to flywheel okay so it is a filler plug filler plug is used for filling the fluid between the turbine and the uh, pump and you can see the guide core which will be uh, directing the fluid okay so you can see the in pump uh, i'll be having a fluid you wait a second one phone is coming i'll be attending the phone and i'll be coming okay okay voice is audible let me check morning and then okay voice is okay okay sir okay so now you can see from pump the fluid will be entering into the turbine and the, from the turbine once the fluid is going to do work on the turbine it will be leaving the turbine and it will be entering into the pump okay wait a second hod sir is calling
okay uh, let us start the class now morning and voice okay you are able to hear okay sir yes sir okay uh see what happens my uh, impeller is rotating and we impeller will be transmitting the torque to the turbine through fluid okay that is fluid will be receiving the energy from the impeller and fluid will be giving the energy to the turbine and it will make the turbine to rotate okay so when the turbine is rotating you can see my turbine is connected to the transmission shaft okay my turbine is connected to the transmission shaft and transmission shaft will be rotated and you can see in a pump it is connected to the flywheel so whenever uh, flywheel engine is started my crankshaft will be rotating flywheel will be rotating so what will happen my pump also will be rotating pump will be pressurizing the fluid so the fluid will be leaving out once it reaches the maximum uh, centrifugal force and uh, it will be having kinetic energy also it will be striking the turbine and it will be making the turbine to rotate once the turbine is rotating it is connected to the transmission shaft so my transmission shaft will be rotating okay so this is the working principle of fluid coupling uh, you no need to draw this sketch but you can uh, draw the bottom one okay so let me show it you no need to draw this one but uh, you can draw this one it is very simple no this one is very simple so you can draw so i'll be giving 2 minutes time copy this okay copy this uh, sketch okay have you copied manikandan have you copied the sketch you copy this part alone who is on the line i think no one is on the line oh manikandan is not there Yeah, yes, giant. Morning, and then have you copied? Yes, sir. Okay.
so you can see impeller and turbine will be rotating in same direction this uh, diagram is very very important so the same thing what i have told engine started impeller rotates so whatever i explain no that is uh, you can go through this slide also if you are going to miss out any points you can uh, read this and you will be able to remember the points so that you can uh, discuss in your paper okay so see a to b radially outward so last class uh, i explained you that is a to b radially outward my radius is getting increased see with respect to transmission shaft this one is small r whereas this one is capital r so my radius is getting increased and uh, you can see radially outward centrifugal uh, force so where i will be having a maximum kinetic energy i will be having at b so it will be imparting to the turbine okay so at b maximum kinetic energy so it will be imparting to c okay so kinetic energy is imparted to the turbine will turbine start uh, rotating and you can see from c to d it is a radial inward force my centrifugal force is inward whereas a to b my centrifugal force is outward and uh, c to d is a radially inward centrifugal force okay so at d my kinetic energy will be minimum because fluid will be transferring energy to the turbine it will be losing energy so you can see at d i'll be having minimum kinetic energy so simplified sketch you, you can draw this one okay so if you are go if you are able to draw this one and this one and this one three sketches you will be getting good marks some students will be drawing this sketch alone okay so that uh, they will be getting a uh, marks less only we need a detailed uh, sketch this type of sketch but uh, for you what is the mode of exam we don't know if it is a two marks it is online mode uh, then you will be escaped you no need to draw the sketch so multiple objective means uh, comfortably you will be writing the exam and comfortably you will be getting the degree okay so uh, what to say there is a help for you Hmm. System is helping you to pass in the exam. Hmm. So, if a regular exam means you have to draw the sketch, and you have to write explanation. Objective means uh, chances are more so that uh, you will be getting pass mark easily, and uh, that is also good for you. Okay. But I think uh, for this semester whether they are going to keep the exam or not, we don't know. Hmm. So, at any cost, uh, you prepare the things uh, both for descriptive type as well as objective type. let us see okay but in interview if you are going for any interview they may ask a draw fluid coupling or torque converter but uh, anyway knowledge is important so try to practice the test okay uh, so already i have explained you whenever the vehicle is rest my turbine is stationary uh, that is uh, when i am going to start my vehicle turbine will not be rotating once the engine is started what will happen my impeller will be rotating okay turbine will be at rest so initially i am started my engine but uh, my vehicle is at uh, rest okay that is a uh, turbine is stationary turbine is connected to my output shaft whenever turbine is rotating my output shaft will be rotating okay so when the engine rotate the uh, impeller centrifugal transfer uh, centrifugal force transfer will take place okay when the vehicle is at rest turbine is stationary no centrifugal transfer and you can see there are two types of flow rotary flow is uh, you can see like in this direction okay that is uh, around the impeller as well as a uh, turbine whereas vortex flow will be having like this around the blades or around the vanes when vortex flow will be there no whenever i am going to transfer the torque from impeller to turbine i will be having vortex flow that is whenever the speed of turbine is equal to uh, less than impeller that is a turbine is getting a uh, power from the impeller i will be having vortex flow when the speeds are more or less equalized further torque is not transmitted from impeller to turbine i will be having what 
rotary flow so this point you have to discuss okay so here you can see fluid is circulated by the impeller around the axis uh, wait a minute So you can see uh, rotary flow fluid is circulated by the impeller around the axis. You can see around the axis. Whereas vortex flow circulate rounds the cell. So uh, here no torque multiplication. That only I have explained. And you can see uh, vortex flow is moments. Vehicle is accelerating. Okay. So and uh, there is a range called cruising speed cruising speed means speed will be between impeller and turbine will be less and there will be no vortex flow only uh, rotary flow rotary flow means uh, around the circumference i told no around so i can the appropriate word is around the circumference and today we have to discuss this one so last class what we have seen since uh, the three students uh, came today i have explained about uh, fluid coupling now, uh, today we will be starting the performance characteristics of fluid coupling. The other word for uh, fluid coupling is uh, fluid flywheel. Okay. So, performance characteristics is very, very important. And you have to draw this uh, graph. This graph has been uh, taken from uh, Eisler. Okay. This graph is taken from Eisler. So, you can see in uh, x axis. I am having a ratio output to input speed. Okay, that is instead of plotting the graph with the speed, what they are doing now? Speed ratio. So that uh, my value will be less. So that whenever we are plotting a graph, we will be going for a ratio. So that I can easily know the relation between the two variables. So output means output of turbine speed. Input means impeller speed. So you can see small n may be used for turbine speed and capital N will be used for uh, impeller uh, speed. Okay. So what will happen when uh, my speed ratio will be 1? That is when turbine speed that is equal to my impeller speed that is small n is equal to capital N. I will be having this ratio 1 and you can see my efficiency will be more. Efficiency will reach the maximum point. Why I am able to transfer the power from impeller to the turbine. Maximum power is transferred and my turbine also rotating at the same speed of my impeller. My small n is equal to n. Speed ratio is 1. So I am having maximum efficiency. So my uh, fluid coupling efficiency will be maximum when the speed ratio is 1. That is theoretically only. Practically, uh, speed ratio 1 is not possible. It will be less than that. Sir. Uh, ah. Vishnu, wait for Vishnu, 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 Vishnu. Yeah, I admit it. Okay. Finally, uh, for final year today, no test donation, sir, has taken leave. Absent as sir, actually. I actually, sir, taken leave today.
okay so now you can see speed ratio it is 1 speed ratio is equal to 1 we will be having a maximum efficiency okay now you can see in y axis in another we are having two y axis one is efficiency and another one is uh, torque is coming now okay we are having a torque capacity okay so you can see whenever efficiency increases with the speed ratio in efficiency increases with speed ratio that is uh, my small n is getting increased my turbine speed is getting increased okay and you can see the torque capacity will uh, decrease with increase in speed why no that is uh, initially at starting more torque will be uh, transmitted from impeller to turbine once the speed increases my torque will decreases because i will not be transmitting a torque my torque will be over i have transmitted torque to my turbine so you can see at uh, speed ratio 1 that is i have transmitted maximum torque so that my uh, turbine speed is equal to my impeller speed so further i will not have torque okay so you can see the torque capacity partially filled and fully it will take a value zero it means what initially i am having a 10 and initially i am having a 6 and i have given my torque to the turbine so that my turbine speed is uh, matching with my impeller speed and torque is coming to zero value okay so this is the inference of this curve and you have to draw this uh, curve that is relationship of torque capacity efficiency and speed ratio for fluid coupling okay so whenever any question is asked explain the performance characteristics of fluid coupling you should be able to draw this okay and uh, whatever i have discussed in the same thing only there is a term called uh, coupling efficiency coupling efficiency means uh, you go here fluid coupling is what it is joining pump and turbine it is joining impeller and turbine so how far my coupling is effective how far my efficiency of the coupling so how i will uh, find out i will found i will find out by how much power given to the turbine and how much power available at the impeller so the maximum power should be given to the turbine that is it is a transmission how far my fluid coupling is uh, transmitting okay you can see for uh, coupling efficiency power available at turbine uh, divided by power supplied to the impeller okay so what power is available because turbine is cutting from the power from the impeller so how much power it has received and uh, how much power supplied to the impeller so this ratio will decides my coupling efficiency how far my fluid coupling is effective and you can see always i will not transfer all the power to the impeller uh, sorry to the turbine power is coming from impeller okay impeller is getting power from engine there will be some loss uh, the fluid is transmitting the power to the impeller to the turbine so you, the power loss may be due to fluid shock and due to friction and heat okay so these are the factors mechanical connection means we can say transmission component due to friction and other factor there will be a power loss if it is a, we are using a medium fluid so i will be considering the fluid shock and fluid friction and heat will be generated so this factor will contribute to the power loss my turbine speed will be less than that of my impeller speed okay so that phenomena that is my turbine speed is less than that of impeller speed i will be terming it as a slip slip means uh, i am not transmitting full power to my turbine there is a difference of uh, speed between turbine and impeller okay so i can say there is a relative slip between two members and this is very very important how to find the slip okay so percentage slip will be capital n minus small n divided by capital n multiplied by 100 okay so capital n means what impeller speed okay capital n stands for impeller speed and small n stands for turbine speed okay so it is uh, with respect to ratio 
that is uh, reference will be my impeller speed so you can see what is the speed difference that is if i minusing n capital n minus small n it will be the slip and with reference to my impeller speed that will be termed as a slip and uh, slip ratio if i multiplying by 100 then it can be termed as percentage slip okay so my percentage slip uh, it should be less as per the uh, required or desired characteristics my turbine speed should be equal to that of my impeller speed so what i will be designing for my fluid coupling my percentage slip should be less okay that is i should have a less slip so what are the factors influencing the slip so the mainly there are uh, two factors that is the uh, engine speed will be influencing and the output uh, turbine load also it will be influencing the slip okay output turbine load means a uh, turbine is connected to the vehicle the vehicle will be traveling on the road so turbine load and uh, engine speed will be influencing the slip okay and uh, what will happen i told you know vortex when vortex will be there whenever there is a speed difference between uh, impeller and turbine n stands for uh, capital n stands for impeller and small n stands for turbine so whenever there is a speed difference we will be having vortex if i am asking a question i have to maintain a vortex flow means i have to maintain slip whenever slip is there that is whenever a difference between turbine speed and uh, uh, in impeller speed and turbine speed i will be having what vortex when the vortex is there what will happen i am imparting energy from turbine to the uh, impeller to the turbine when vortex is not there only rotary flow is there then i am not uh, imparting energy from impeller to the turbine okay so vortex is needed to impart uh, energy from impeller to the turbine so you may think uh, here i have shown no uh, coupling efficiency uh, reaching a maximum uh, value okay but uh, theoretically uh, practically coupling efficiency will not be reaching uh, 100 and all it will be 98 okay what happen uh, it will not be reaching uh, 100 it will be 98 because my uh, turbine out output load will be increased or the impeller speed is uh, maybe uh, reduced okay so due to some uh, other factors what will happen my coupling efficiency will not be 100 it will be uh, 98 and the most important point what you have to uh, discuss is whenever percentage slip is more i am increasing the vortex circulation velocity that is my fluid will be circulating around the veins of the impeller as well as uh, the turbine okay so next characteristics here i am going to draw a graph between uh, engine speed torque and slip okay so percentage slip 100 percent torque okay and this one is a 50 you can see whenever uh, percentage slip is more my torque will be uh, more it will be having a maximum value that is a torque uh, transmitted by the impeller to the turbine will be more when the slip re reduces okay uh, when the slip see in y-axis i'm having percentage slip slip is a 20 what happened torque reaches maximum uh, value okay so whenever my slip is reduces my torque value also will get uh, reduces okay my more amount of uh, torque will be transferred to the turbine and there is a phenomena called uh, stall torque that is stall torque means my turbine is stationary and uh, impeller will be starting to deliver the torque at that condition will be termed as stall so stall means my turbine is stationary and the impeller will be starting to deliver the torque to the turbine so this position you can see my slip will be maximum say 100 percent okay this case my slip is 100 percent because my uh, turbine uh, speed will be zero so that uh, you can see the ratio here my turbine speed is zero nn will, will be cancelled percentage slip will be 100 this condition is known as stall turbine is stationary my impeller started rotating and impeller will be starting to deliver torque to the turbine and this condition is known as stall okay so later what will happen when the percentage slip is going to get uh, reduced my engine torque will be uh, decreased so see this re re uh, region whenever the slip is going to reduce because uh, my turbine speed is increasing and matching with impeller speed my torque transmission is getting reduced okay 
and the most important characteristics is my torque will be proportional to this like this okay you have to understand fifth power of the impeller diameter and square of the impeller speed okay fifth power of the impeller diameter and square of my impeller speed so you have to remember this formula that is when i am increasing the diameter five times uh, power of the five times my torque will be varied whereas uh, impeller speed it will be square so when i am increasing the impeller diameter the torque transmission capacity will be increasing more compared to increasing the speed okay my d is having a significant uh, influence in my torque transmitting capacity so you have to understand this formula and uh, this one see the what i have explained the same thing only i am going to elaborate now so present day slip is uh, defined as capital n minus small n divided by capital n instead of using capital n and small n i am using n1 and n2 for a better understanding so this slide is taken from uh, kirpal singh kirpal singh uh, they they used n1 and n2 n1 will be speed of the driving member and n2 will be uh, speed of the driven member so n1 is the impeller speed and n2 will be the turbine speed okay n1 minus n2 divided by n1 into 100 so the same thing uh, present day slip means loss of energy increasing and fuel consumption that is uh, i am using my fuel to run the impeller but i am not getting the power from the impeller to propel the vehicle simply my uh, engine is running and the impeller is rotating i am having loss of energy i am wasting my fuel whenever uh, present day slip is there okay so i have to focus to reduce it i have to get the power from engine that is fluid coupling should have a more coupling efficiency so that i will be transmitting power from impeller to the turbine in the best way okay so you can see i told you know my speed dictates torque when speed is low say 500 rpm no my present day slip will be more you can see 100% that is when i am operating the engine at 500 rpm what happens my present day slip is 100% my turbine will not be rotating itself okay my turbine is not rotating itself and uh, impeller is rotating when i am increasing the speed to 1000 rpm what happen my slip falls to 10 percentage now my turbine speed increases and difference between uh, turbine and uh, impeller speed the ratio the slip it is 10 percentage so somewhat uh, it is effective my 10 percentage of power is getting wasted okay further increase in speed say 3000 rpm my slip reduces to 2 percentage so this is the optimum operation that is i have to operate my engine at a speed of 3000 rpm so that my slip uh, will be falling rapidly to 2 percentage okay so my slip will be falling rapidly to 2 percentage so that i will be increasing the speed to 3000 rpm okay so this is a uh, very very important that is i should not uh, allow my engine to run a speed between 500 to 1000 rpm so when the engine is uh, running no i should ensure that my speed should be 3000 rpm so that my slip will be less okay then uh, what are the advantage of fluid coupling means no mechanical uh, parts so no wear no maintenance okay so it will be a simple uh, design and another thing is you know about uh, fluid okay so whenever uh, there is a power transmission there will be no jerk that is uh, for a conventional vehicle if i am uh, disengaging the clutch or engaging the clutch that is after disengaging i will be releasing the foot pedal okay that is a clutch pedal what will happen you will be feeling the jerk because the mechanical component will be transmitting the force okay so by using the fluid we will not be having no jerk so it since it is a power transmission by hydraulic fluid is there it will be observing the jerk as well as uh, shock okay so here when i am using fluid coupling i will not be going for a clutch pedal that is very very important if it is a semi automatic transmission what i will be having i will be having a accelerator pedal and i will be having a brake pedal and i will be having a gear box uh, no clutch pedal when i am going for a fluid coupling okay whereas if i am going for torque converter gear box will not be there simply there will be five modes in third unit you will be studying this 
what are the different modes how to obtain and uh, you no need to select the gears you have to select the mode whether you are going to park whether you are going to be in neutral whether you are going to drive so like this only you are going to decide okay so another disadvantage is even though my uh, slip is uh, 100% that is my turbine is not uh, rotating okay what happened between the turbine and impeller i will be having a fluid okay my turbine is not rotating but uh, between the turbine and impeller i will be having a fluid the fluid will be exerting a force on gearbox shaft that is a major problem with the fluid coupler so even though i am not rotating my turbine that is i am no turbine is not rotating slip is 100% there will be a drag so drag is a force which is opposing uh, acting on the gearbox shaft and i have to overcome this drag to uh, to rotate the turbine so my power is getting a waste to overcome this drag so i have to design my fluid coupling so the drag on gearbox shaft will be less and you have to remember the one of the major important point when you are using a fluid coupling that is i told you know not automatic transmission it is a semi automatic only clutch is automated okay so i will be going for a gear gearbox in that no you can't use a sliding mesh or constant mesh gearbox because you can't change the gear why no the fluid that is when you are changing the gear there will be a drag my hydraulic force will be acting and i will be feeling very difficult to change the gear when i am going for ordinary gearbox so i have to go for my epicyclic gearbox okay the epicyclic gearbox means by using a brake band and other components i will be getting uh, different gears uh, you will be seeing about epicyclic gearbox there is a last unit i have discussed no epicyclic gearbox sun planet gear and ring gear so for fluid coupling always you have to remember you can't use a sliding mesh gearbox or constant mesh gearbox you will be using what epicyclic gearbox okay now we'll be starting a torque converter so what we have seen let me summarize so last class we have seen fluid coupling how it is working and today we have seen it again and a slight introduction about the working of fluid coupling have been discussed and we have discussed the fluid coupling uh, performance characteristics we have seen two graphs how efficiency and uh, torque is going to vary with the speed ratio so we discussed about uh, performance uh, characteristics of fluid coupling and then uh, we discussed about a term called the uh, slip what is the important uh, characteristics of slip and we discussed about the uh, merit and demerit of fluid coupling so we have completed the uh, fluid coupling okay so in the syllabus there is a question how to reduce the drag on uh, gearbox shaft uh, that i will be uh, discussing it uh, later okay so i have ka discussed you let me show the syllabus so you can see fluid coupling i have completed i have discussed about the uh, principle and i have discussed about uh, construction details and i have explained about torque capacity the curve is there no that curve we have to draw that indicates torque capacity performance also that curve that has been taken from esler it is a standard answer so blindly you can rely on it it will be the quality of answer will be good if you are referring that uh, graph okay so standard answer for my fluid coupling and the next thing is how to reduce the drag torque in fluid coupling this is very very important we will be uh, seeing otherwise i will be uh, giving notes for this okay so some techniques how to reduce the drag drag in fluid coupling now we will be starting a uh, similar to fluid coupling we will be starting torque converter now okay so what you are going to do now i will be showing the sketch of torque converter that is a simple sketch you copy that sketch and i will be coming within 5 minutes i will have some water and i will come in torque converter there is a additional unit called stator i will be explaining this all just copy this sketch in exam if you are uh, drawing this sketch you know you will be getting more marks because this sketch is uh, taken from uh, eisler a more uh, complete representation will be there okay compared to kirpal singh eisler is somewhat uh, 
uh, i'll be taking i will be discussing the topic in uh, detail okay so you copy the sketch i will have some water and i will be coming within 5 minutes okay So have we copied? Lover son Ragamon Manigandan Vishnu Vijay Kumar. Manigandan, are you on the line? Yes, sir. Okay. Shall we start that converter now? Okay. My voice is audible, man. Money content? Yes, sir. Tar converter, we can start now. 
பண்ணலாம் சார் ஓகே ஸோ சி டார் கன்வெர்டர் வாட் இஸ் கேரக்டரிஸ்டிக்ஸ் ஆஃப் டார் கன்வெர்டர்னா ஃப்ளூயிட் கப்ளிங் வில் பி கனெக்டிங் த இன்ஜின் வித் மை ரோட் வீல்ஸ் வில் பி ட்ரான்ஸ்மிட்டிங் த டார்க் வில் பி கப்ளிங் வேர் எஸ் வர் டார் கன்வெர்டர் இட் வில் கனெக்ட் அண்ட் இட் வில் பி மல்டிப்ளைங் த டார்க் ஃப்ளூயிட் கப்ளிங் கான்ட் மல்டிப்ளை த டார்க் வேர் எஸ் மை டார்க் கன்வெர்டர் வில் மல்டிப்ளை த டார்க் ஓகே இட் வில் பி டூயிங் த ஃபங்க்ஷன் ஆஃப் கியர் பாக்ஸ் சி வென் ஐம் ஹேவிங் அ ஃப்ளூயிட் கப்ளிங் நோ ஐ ஹேவ் டு ஹேவ் அ கியர் பாக்ஸ் ஆல்சோ in order to get the torque for different uh, road condition whereas in torque converter fully automatic that is a fully automatic transmission will be having what torque converter you no need to uh, change the gears simply you have to select the mode park mode drive mode neutral mode reverse mode okay so based on that the vehicle will be moving so it will be very useful for uh, this car will be uh, what to say it will be very comfortable for driving okay that is uh, for ladies physically handicapped they will be preferring uh, automatic transmission and uh, what will happen the cost is more since you are having a fluid between the turbine and impeller cost of my uh, transmission will be uh, getting increased but more comfort okay my driving will be more comfort so you no need to change the gears and you no need to press the clutch simply start the vehicle and uh, select the appropriate mode press the accelerator and brake when two pedals only okay so it is going towards automation transmission is getting automated okay so in torque converter you can see this one is housing housing and you will be having a turbine and a impeller in addition to that we are having a stator uh, let me explain you why we are using a stator so what will happen now let me uh, show the sketch first then i will be uh, uh, see first i will explain everything then you can uh, discuss other point see turbine is uh, near flywheel side my pump you can see it is connected to the flywheel my pump is uh, connected to the flywheel so my pump will be rotating along with the uh, flywheel and uh, i'll be having a uh, another unit between turbine and uh, pump that is known as uh, stator stator what is the main function of stator is responsible for torque multiplication so in torque converter addition to turbine and pump we are having what stator and you can see the turbine is connected to the output shaft that is a transmission shaft you no need to draw this and all this is very very important flywheel is just a rectangle and uh, the center part make it simple no need to draw like this and all i am not uh, requiring uh, a sketch to show the steps and all like this okay just i want to see the flywheel a crank shaft the name is very very important you can draw anything and you can uh, name it as a crankshaft or a flywheel provided it should be outline is necessary okay and the center part this and all not needed okay i need turbine output shaft fluid inlet fluid outlet not necessary and main thing you have to show one way clutch my stator will be rotate uh, fixed on one way clutch and one way clutch will be fixing my stator to the casing okay so that is a uh, very very important and you have to show the guide core so what will happen in a uh, torque converter no let me explain from this uh, sketch first of all you see the direction of rotation is uh, different your uh, turbine will be rotating in one direction say anti clockwise whereas a uh, impeller will be rotating in another direction due to the stator so here you can see you are having a curved uh, vanes and you are having a torus guide core to direct the fluid flow the same thing fluid particle here will be receiving energy from the blade okay you can see the arrow is towards the fluid particle from the blade i will be getting the energy so once i am getting the centrifugal force and kinetic energy of the particle will be moving from position a to b okay at b what will happen maximum radius okay here you say small r whereas uh, from 
B2 center will be having maximum R, that is capital R, maximum centrifugal force, and maximum kinetic energy will be there. Okay. So what will happen now? Uh, the force will be, it will be reaching the maximum point. So beyond that, uh, it can't be uh, increased. So that uh, it, the force will be transferred to the turbine. So the fluid particle will be moving tangentially. Here it is moving radially and here it will be moving tangentially. And it will be striking the blades of the torque converter. It will be striking the veins of the torque converter. So it will be start contacting this position. Let us assume uh, it is at C. So already I have discussed here at C, what will happen? Maximum centrifugal force and maximum energy will be available. Now you can see force is transmitted from fluid particle to the blade. Whereas here, force is transmitted from blade to the fluid particle. Here, in turbine, force is transmitted to the fluid particle to the blade. Okay. So now what will happen? My turbine will be starting to rotate. The blades are designed in such a manner that my impeller direction and the turbine direction will be different for torque converter. Okay. So now uh, the fluid will be a uh, fluid particle will move from a position C to D. What will happen? C to D, D, I will be having minimum energy. I will not have a uh, more centrifugal force and I will not be having kinetic energy also because uh, I have transferred everything to my blades of my turbine. From D, what happened? The fluid will be leaving from the turbine and it will be about to go to the impeller again. In fluid coupling, what will happen? The fluid will be coming from the turbine and it will be going to the impeller. Uh, listen carefully now. This is the very, very important. So the fluid which is coming out of the turbine, no, consider no stator. It will be going and it will be striking the impeller opposite to the direction of rotation. Listen carefully. My impeller will be rotating in that di one direction. My fluid which is leaving the turbine, no, it will be coming and it will be striking the impeller in a direction opposite to this of rotation. So what happened? Uh, I have to overcome that force. That is, it is like a opposing force. So my power is wasted up to overcome the force which is coming out of the turbine. So what in torque converter we are doing now? We are mounting a unit called stator. Stator main function is redirect the fluid flow so that it will change the direction of fluid flow, my fluid will be entering the impeller in the direction of rotation. Actually, the force, the fluid force, which is coming, no, it will be assisting the impeller to rotate further. So listen carefully. Previously, without stator, it will, it will resist the motion of impeller. Whereas now, when I'm fixing the stator, my fluid direction is changed, OK? my fluid direction which is going to strike the impeller is uh, changed, what will happen? It will make the impeller to rotate in the same direction. It will assist in impeller rotation. So due to, due to this only, torque multiplication is going to take place. My impeller will get the power from the engine and also the additional uh, small amount of force which is coming out of my turbine. It will be utilizing that force too for rotation. Previously, that force will be opposite in fluid coupling because no stator. But here, I'm having a stator, so it's changing the direction. So my impeller will be getting an yeah, additional force. Okay, My engine also delivering my impeller to rotate, and I am getting the force also from turbine. So that two force will be acting on the impeller to rotate. So I'm getting what? Torque multiplication. Okay. So torque multiplication is achieved. So further, what will happen? Further, more amount of torque will be transferred to the turbine. So till uh, turbine speed uh, re reaches its maximum, that is after of impeller speed, this uh, repeated pushing of the turbine, that is uh, repeatedly the fluid particle will be entering into the turbine and it will be moving the turbine and uh, torque multiplication will take place. Once the turbine speed is matching a point that is equal to that of impeller, a coupling point is reached. That is beyond that I can increase my turbine speed. So at that time, what I will be doing? No, I will not be allowing the fluid to strike the impeller. I will be uh, 
mounting the stator that is i will be releasing the stator okay uh, let me make it clear my stator is mounted on one way clutch what do you mean by one way clutch no you can see this this is most simplified sketch this also you can adapt okay my stator is mounted on one way clutch one way clutch means it will allow the stator to rotate in one direction only in other direction it will not allow okay so my one way clutch is will allow the stator to rotate in one direction okay listen carefully now whenever torque multiplication is happening that is uh, when the fluid leaving from the turbine stator will be changing the direction and it will be uh, allowing the fluid to enter into the impeller so that my uh, tur impeller will be rotating it will be getting assisting force from the fluid which is leaving the turbine through stator okay so once the coupling point is reached uh, this force will not be beneficial so what i will be doing no i will release the one way clutch previously i will fix this one way clutch so stator will be fixed to the casing that is a fluid from the turbine which will be striking the stator and it will be making the stator to rotate in the opposite direction so that uh, the pump force the force which is acting on the pump will be opposite but i am preventing it by fixing the stator uh, with the help of one way clutch to the casing so what happen my fluid will be striking the blades of the stator and it will be entering the pump in the desired direction that it will be assisting in the motion of the impeller once the coupling point is reached i will release this one way clutch so what happened now the stator will be free to rotate okay at the time what happened now torque converter is converted into fluid coupling you understand this word once the torque multiplication is completed that is a torque is transferred from impeller to turbine and turbine is uh, rotating at the point beyond which i can increase the speed that is maximum amount of torque is getting transmitted to the turbine then i will release the stator by one way clutch i am not fixing the stator to this uh, casing so my stator will be free wheeling free wheeling means just it is like a coupling that is i can say my torque converter will be converted into fluid coupling during free wheeling that is when i am releasing the one way clutch i will allow the stator to rotate so that uh, it will be a free wheeling at that time my turbine and pump will be connected only no torque multiplication just it will transfer the power from pump to the turbine initially only i have to make the turbine to rotate fast no immediately i have to transfer the power from my engine to the turbine so i have to transfer more torque so initially to transmit more torque i am fixing the stator to one way clutch so turbine will come to the impeller speed soon once it is coming a coupling point is reached i will release this one way clutch so that my stator will be rotating uh, that is it will be free wheeling so the uh, fluid will be entering from the turbine it will be going to the pump and it will be like a fluid coupling okay so it will be like a fluid coupling so this is the working principle of torque converter now we will see uh, the points which is listed in the slide so this one just it will be in our revision only what we are going to see so already i have told you some uh, you are going to see the points in the slide torque converter will be mounted in input side of the transmission so and so stories okay and this is the impeller okay so you know that uh, impeller is uh, driven by engine and you can see we can say it as a fins or uh, blades okay so this is uh, we have seen and this is the turbine you can see the turbine is connected to the transmission shaft okay so turbine power has to transfer to the transmission shaft and turbine receives fluid from impeller okay the same thing only uh, some additional points will be given 
so now see where the stator will be located you have to remember that my stator is located between turbine and impeller okay so already i told you the stator is going to redirect the fluid to the impeller so that uh, again the torque multiplication will be taken place and stator is mounted with the help of one way clutch okay so in torque converter you have to remember this word uh, impeller turbine stator stator is fixed using one way clutch okay so stator is mounted on one way clutch so that uh, it not oppose it can't find means it can't oppose the flow okay so uh, this is the another point i want to discuss that is a further explanation so already i told you whenever vortex flow is there there will be what torque multiplication okay so uh, more amount of torque will be transferred from impeller to turbine that is i have to ensure vortex flow then only torque will be transmitted okay that is a fluid will be uh, circulating around the veins so my stator is helping to achieve my stator is uh, helping to achieve so that fluid will be striking the impeller in the desired uh, direction torque multiplication occurs okay so uh, another thing uh, the torque converter is similar to a mechanical uh, link only okay so but we, it is operated hydraulically okay so uh, other things and this is the technical details construction details of torque converter you can see a uh, impeller no need to draw this uh, sketch this uh, bottom sketch is important and the top sketch is for understanding purpose okay and you can see this one is impeller how many blades turbine you can see the number of blades there may be a reason why uh, blade shape is not uh, equal due to orient the fluid flow okay so that is we may be doing uh, some experimental uh, analysis or simulation a cft research will be done to analyze the working of the torque converter okay and uh, material you have to discuss when construction is asked construction details both the impeller and turbine is made up of c low carbon and stator it's made up of aluminum and it may be of 15 plates okay so this and all are additional details so i can summarize the points what i have explained you know with help of sketch i can summarize okay so torque converter multiplies uh, torque fluid coupling will not multiply the torque torque converter will multiply the torque and torque converter will serve as a automatic uh, clutch okay so you can uh, re remember this word since fluid is uh, we are using fluid it will observe what torsional vibration of engine okay it will observe torsional vibration of engine so and another thing uh, torque converter is going to drive the oil pump so it, since it is a hydraulic control system oil pump uh, needs uh, power i have to supply power so my torque converter i can uh, get uh, what to say a uh, yeah, power that will be uh, generate uh, using to drive the oil pump okay so this is a sketch i am showing in the enhanced view you can see impeller turbine and these are called the uh, fluid cells the area between our two plates no i can uh, term it as fluid cells and uh, this is the this sketch is very very important for uh, understanding the working of torque converter you can see the fluid which is coming out of the turbine striking here and it is moving uh, uh, touching the curvature of the blades of the stator that is it is leaving the stator at a point f and then it is striking the impeller the direction of rotation of impeller it will assist the impeller rotation okay. so already i have told you the additional stationary uh, member so how much it increases the torque it increases the torque ratio about 2 is to 1 to 3 is to 1 so when you are using a gear box you no know, that is a sliding mesh gear box your uh, gear ratio is fixed that is it may be uh, i can term it is a finite number of shape 3.25 is to 1 then 2.25 is to 1 then in 1 is to 1 it is a uh, finite whereas here my torque output variation is continuously it is not in step but there will be infinite number of gear ratio okay and the uh, most important drawback of this torque converter you no know, its efficiency will be i only with the narrow limit of the speed that is i have to operate the speed 
within a range then only i can uh, utilize size my torque converter in the best way my efficiency will be i okay so i have explained why we need a stator in fluid coupling okay that is uh, the same thing that is in a uh, i can say in torque converter and fluid coupling i can stop my vehicle in gear so conventionally uh, when you are going to stop the vehicle in gear what will be doing will be bringing the gears to neutral and you will be uh, pressing the clutch that you will be disengaging the clutch then you will be uh, pressing the brake pedal so that my vehicle will uh, come to rest whereas here i can stop my uh, vehicle on gear okay and you can see uh, the fluid that is in fluid coupling the characterization is poor acceleration that is a uh, torque multiplication is not achieved in fluid coupling See, we know the vanes are in opposite direction the fluid coming from the impeller that is fluid coming from the turbine will be entering in the impeller in opposite direction the engine is rotating in clockwise the fluid which is coming out of the turbine no it will be anti clockwise so i am losing power so i will be using that power to overcome the force of fluid which is coming from the turbine okay so let us i am summarizing the point what i am discussed now i am using the appropriate word that is i am using force of fluid okay so whenever a stator is uh, provided there will be two components two things will be delivering a uh, torque to the impeller one is from engine and another is from due to the stator that is the fluid which is coming out of the turbine okay so there are uh, three parts these are some additional details already i told you impeller turbine we have to present like this okay stator how i am fixing stator stator is fixed to a frame that it can be termed as a casing also through one way clutch okay so the parts are should uh, should be kept in a oil okay it should be uh, i have to keep the torque converter full of oil so i have to keep my uh, casing with a pressurized oil for that i am using what transmission oil pump and there will be a problem related to cavitation why you no know? uh, since uh, centrifugal force i am operating with the fluid that is in fluid mechanics you might have discussed about uh, cavitation whenever a pressure is going to get uh, decreased will be having a bubbles that is i am losing my uh, fluid pressure okay so what i have to do i have to ensure that cavitation should not uh, take place so my converter should be operating in this uh, range 200 kilo pascal to 1200 kilo pascal to avoid a uh, cavitation okay so the same thing when the engine start impeller rotates and uh, oil leaving impeller okay the turbine rotates so everything is same you can uh, go through i am explained also okay so here what will happen from turbine it is uh, striking the stator this equation is very very important for torque converter if you are writing this equation it is presumed that you have understood the concept that is a uh, engine torque delivered to the impeller plus reaction torque transferred from the fluid to the impeller that is uh, with the help of a stator no i am getting a a force that will be assisting the uh, in rotation of impeller so two things engine torque delivered to the impeller and reaction torque transferred by the fluid to the impeller two things are getting added that torque is transmitted to my output turbine so torque multiplication is uh, going to take place okay so what i am doing is i am observing the fluid momentum by a casing and i am redirecting to the impeller okay this sketch will be more uh, simple line sketch you can uh, adapt uh, this sketch also because i am showing a casing how to fix the stator to the casing with help of one way clutch so already i told you stator is going to take the reaction that is the impeller is delivering power to the turbine no so that due to that uh, reactional uh, force that reaction force will be taken uh, by the stator and it making the force to strike the impeller in a direction a uh, same direction okay so what happened this is the main word i have explained you know this word should be there repeated pushing of turbine blades continuously i have to push the turbine blade so that only my turbine speed uh, will increase repeated pushing means i am supplying the torque uh, continuously i am increasing the torque continuously that is i am uh, compared to the initial case i am supplying more torque so that uh, my turbine speed uh, matches with my impeller speed continuously i am increasing the torque 
that word can be simplified that is repeated pushing of turbine blades okay so this is known as torque multiplication so torque multiplication will be achieving whenever my turbine speed is less than impeller speed okay then only i can transfer the torque from impeller to turbine when it is equal no i can't ensure uh, torque multiplication okay and when the torque multiplication is maximum that is uh, i'll be transmitting 2.1 uh, to 2.6 okay so that condition is known as stall that is stall means turbine is stationary impeller is uh, running at that of engine speed and uh, another factor is uh, torque multiplication will be maximum so two condition for stall turbine is stationary and torque multiplication will be maximum okay so what happen when vehicle begins to move turbine uh, speed uh, start to increase and there will be a decrease in torque multiplication why no whenever uh, there is a difference between impeller and turbine speed turbine speed is zero torque multiplication is a maximum maximum amount of torque will be uh, given once the turbine is getting uh, rotated my torque multiplication will be uh, getting reduced okay and torque multiplication will be one when my turbine speed is equal to my impeller speed i will be terming it as direct gear okay now we will see the actual uh, working uh, actually turbine speed will not be equal to impeller speed what happens no turbine speed will be taking a value that is 85 percentage of impeller speed that point is known as coupling point i told no a coupling point is reached so when is coupling point no when turbine speed will be equal to 85 percentage of my impeller speed so at that time what will happen uh, you can see actually the fluid which is coming from the turbine should strike the this portion of my stator okay there are two portions on stator plate that is convex concave i can use this one as front and uh, that one as a uh, back so when this coupling point is reached no my turbine uh, fluid flow that is fluid which is coming from the turbine will not striking at a point e it will be striking at the back side so that only i have to release my uh, stator that is i have to allow free wheeling of my stator so see hit the back of the my stator so what will happen now again the problem starts it not allow the fluid from the turbine to the impeller so my uh, when i am fixing the stator actually now i am interrupting the flow when the coupling point is uh, reached so that only i am using what free way clutch that is one way clutch so when the coupling point is uh, reached i will allow the stator to rotate in the direction of turbine and uh, or impeller so that it will not interrupt the flow so same thing <coughs> okay so one way clutch allows stator to rotate in same direction so it will uh, prevent if it is going to rotate in opposite direction no one way clutch will uh, prevent opposite from rotation okay. here you can see i am locking the one way clutch that is a uh, fluid which is leaving from the turbine no it will make the stator to rotate in anti clockwise that is opposite to that of impeller i am not allowing i am locking my stator so the fluid hitting the blade and changing the direction of fluid flow so that it will be try striking the impeller to rotate in clockwise direction clockwise means uh, i am weaving in this in this direction from this is the axis means i can term this one as clockwise okay and similarly another problem what will happen here it is striking at the front once the coupling point is reached the fluid will be uh, striking in another point okay that is a uh, say back side at that time it will make the stator to rotate that is when i am allowing the stator to rotate what will happen stator will be rotating in clockwise that is a uh, previously that is before coupling point is reached the reactional force coming from the turbine will make the stator to rotate in anti clockwise so that only i am fixing the stator to the casing so the direction of fluid flow is changed and it will be uh, assisting the impeller to rotate in clockwise direction 
at that coupling point my direction this they have found out okay it will be striking the stator plane on rear side now i am going to fix no then again i am interrupting the fluid flow again i am um, making the fluid to strike the impeller opposite to the impeller rotation then i am preventing it okay so what i at the time i should allow my stator to rotate so that only i am using one way clutch i am releasing the stator now what will happen stator and impeller will be rotating in same direction so that i am not interrupting the fluid flow when i am interrupting the fluid flow then power is going to get lost at friction the stator will uh, consume that power i am allowing the stator to rotate so now at this point my torque converter will be a fluid coupling i am not uh, doing torque multiplication i am transferring the torque from turbine to impeller okay so you can see uh, vortex whenever the vehicle is accelerating oil uh, i vortex will be there okay so the same thing this sketch will be uh, explaining well related to stator that is when we have to fix the stator and when we have to release the stator okay so you can see uh, the centrifugal force causing the cir circular flow and you can see the stator changes the direction of flow to multiply the torque now it is a crossing speed that is the speed of turbine is almost equal to speed of impeller so what happens the centrifugal force will be opposite okay stator uh, free wheeling no torque multiplication so during crossing no torque multiplication so this is uh, this and all additional information so different uh, reference i have taken so whichever slide or whichever explanation which is comfortable you can refer it okay now see when i am not fixing the stator fluid coming from the turbine it will be going like this by fixing the stator you can see it will be going like this okay this will be making to rotate in, uh, in the one direction and it will be making to rotate in another direction actually this direction will be assisting in impeller rotation okay i have told uh, stall this one is called a uh, coupling phase so other things uh, will be uh, discussing in the next uh, class that is uh, i have to discuss about torque converter performance characteristics and some uh, points we'll be discussing in the next class okay and uh, you are having a objective test for automotive transmission on 27th uh, october 27th uh, let me check i have already put in whatsapp no there is third year there is a pre examination see part a 1 into 30 and part b 10 into 2 uh, it is written see 27 you are having what automotive transmission and 22 23 note on the time table and for taking test you have to uh, video is essential that is we have to see your face whether you are copying or not so this is very very important so you have to unmute uh, that is whenever any doubts related to queries or in ex handling examination you can ask and other thing is you have to open your video that is we have to see your face when you are not doing uh, when you are not uh, allowing video access to us then uh, we can't treat it as like a exam that is we have to do inhalation duty no so you have to uncover your uh, video you should not uh, block it so ensure that your mobile is having uh, that capability for exam at least for exam try to take the exam in laptop or uh, by a good mobile so that uh, the problem will not come mainly eleverson ragman has left vishnu vijay kumar uh, no response so if, uh, during examination i don't want to see your uh, this one that uh, wallpaper i want to see your face 
that is you have to turn on the camera okay for me not needed because since i am a invigilator i for me not needed that is a first class i used to take it in a laptop then i will uh, turn on camera but uh, since you have to be monitored i have to see your face so you have to turn on camera so if you are not turning on camera and uh, if your uh, option is coming like this your answer paper will not be validated because it, since it is needed for your uh, term and exam also that is after one month uh, you will be appearing for annual city exam no at the time you can't uh, have some excuses like this they have to monitor you okay so try to ensure that uh, facility now itself so tomorrow we will be seeing in the next class any doubts you can ask otherwise you can cut the call and you can leave okay thank you